Hello, Radiant Soul Light. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. And let me tell you a little bit about how I do my readings here. Uh, first off, you can um, jump forward. Um, you can click on the link to the timestamp if you'd like to. In the beginning of the reading, I do a bit of a tune in and get the energetic pulse of what's happening in the Kashuk, what's unfolding in the etheric plane. And how are the universal cosmological energies affecting us on an individual level? So I deal a lot with the soul, which is the individual, although we do have a collective soul also. So um, if you want to skip ahead, this is soul story number one, number two, and number three. Timestamp is in the description box below. Uh, those of you that are staying with me for a bit, I want to let everyone know you can still connect with me through my website, soulplayground.life. Also, mentor cam for questions. Connect with me, of course, um, on Instagram. And my Soul Centered Living um, starts Saturday, um, August 28th. Um, so this, yeah, I think you'll get this, this reading. So if you're interested in that, there's a um, link in the description box, or you can go to soulplayground.life and go to classes and courses. All right, so, hmm, let me just align further with you, okay? Hmm. So I've been getting a lot of messages from people, DMs, um, friends texting, phoning, a lot of people in my workshops um, asking what's going on and what they can do about it with the energy. And so I'm starting to talk more about my predictions, the visions that I've had, the messages that I've got. Those of you that are part of the Patreon um, Soul Path community, I do um, videos and I talk, share about this in our uh, monthly meetup, um, Uncensored. Um, as you all know, there has to be, there's a bit of censoring going on. So I, from the very beginning, 20 plus years, my guides always told me work with small groups and give the information um, as people want it. So I did do a deeper dive um, today on my podcast, Awakenings with Michelle Mache. I'm videoing this on, on Wednesday, but it will come out tomorrow, Thursday, uh, the 26th. So um, you can go to any you know, podcast platforms if you're interested. And we also had a great astrologer, Rachel Lang, um, was on also uh, talking about her book. And then we looked at the um, universal energies of collective and how it's affecting us individually and what we can do. So um, I'm going to give you the pulse a bit because I have been saying for the last two months, and I said August would be a month of a lot of jolting, jarring information, shock, things that we didn't expect that we didn't think were going to happen, further lockdown. I said lockdowns would be more severe. And, you know, these laws, some places, laws, mandates, um, this is going to be ramping up. And I'm going to be talking more about this and offering the information that I um, receive. Um, but I also come from the place of what can we do about this? Because we are the ones that are co-creating the through the new emerging consciousness. We're uploading or downloading or opening up to embody the new emerging consciousness and live from that. So we are the co-creators of this new paradigm of the new earth. There's a, a mind shift, um, especially if you look astrologically with the planetary influences um, in air. So what's gonna be happening, yes, we are in the converging flow. And part of that converging flow is the divergence, is the splitting, the separating out, which does look like extremes of the polarity plane being played out. So a lot of dissension, a lot of arguing, a lot of, you know, my way is right, no, my way is right. Metaphysically, that is, uh, and esoterically, that is harmony through conflict. So the prelude to understanding is misunderstanding. Ever have a misunderstanding with someone you really care for or like? And after a while, depending how conscious and how triggered people are from misunderstanding, they can move into understanding. So out of conflict, there will be, there is a harmonizing principle that is taking place or will be more harmony that you may find it right now with more like-minded individuals. So the, the lesson is, how not to get caught up in the extremes of the polarity plane 
of us and them, how to have your viewpoint, your belief system, what's working for you, what you're co-creating with yourself, other people, and allowing, having tolerance, respect, and also an honoring of what others are creating. Those that seem to be against you, the ones that the people that are, sh are shaming and bullying to make certain decisions, they're actually the weight, they're the resistance that is allowing uh, many of us that are forward thinking, star seeds, light workers, people that are connecting more into the 5D. <clears throat> because as you extend or expand, it's not good or bad, it's just less and less out of the extremes of the polarity plane out of getting stuck in the extremes of duality is another way to look at it. And of course, on the earth plane, we have duality. That's how we create magnetic, electrical, male, female, AC, DC, you know, in, out, reach, withdraw, that flow. Um, that is a creative principle, the, you know, the ovum and the um, spermazoa, right? So these principles, but the higher principle is always the third. The, the extremes of the polarity are, are where the wounding lies and there's less consciousness, there's less awareness. It's when we can take from the polarity, that's what the ascension is. It's extending or expanding through the higher self into the more the I am, the I am that I am, into the infinite intelligence of the all that is, God, whatever you want to call it, into the resonant fields, the unified field. And so in the unified field, um, you know, we can see how we're all part of the polarity. We're holding different poles. So the call is to how to move more into the center. And it's just going to be very challenging for many because we get triggered. Um, but that is the way out, the way through, is to not get stuck in the extremes of the polarity. Yet, focus on your creation and what's right for you. It's very individual, but yet group. And you can see it's holding those two dynamics, being very individually focused, self-responsibility, but also awareness of what's right for the group. Now, what's right for the group is not what's not right for the individual, the individual volition and rights. One way around all of this also is to notice before this happened, the big P, you know, the whole shot thing, pandemic, um, is what were your values then? What are your core values on a soul level? See, this is about getting to the soul because the soul can hang out with a lot of different people, you know? Um, the, the, the soul, when you're living from the soul, it always takes the, it likes variety and it takes the most expansion, expanded view. It's like listening to a certain type of music that you're not really into, but you can see, oh, I can see why that person's into it. Or you can listen to it without being triggered. You know, like you can listen to a song being played without change the channel, put something else on. I don't like this. And that's where people are at right now. And so you'll find the people that are the most vocal are the less sure of where they're at or what they're about. Um, that are more oppositional, trying to um, make people make certain dis decisions or choices. It is about choice. It is about sovereignty, but beyond identity. It is from the soul of the spirit realm, the identity of the spirit realm. So it's really not about the identity of how one is identifying. Yeah, it's game changer. There's a lot of game changing and you're gonna see that within the next six, eight months. Come February, there are some big changes and you may find yourself on one side of the fence and someone else that you care about or love on the other. This is a little trick from the oversouls from the all uh, is the all that is the innate intelligence is to get us from over identifying with what we think something is by how someone looks so you may find yourself making decisions or doing things that you didn't think you would or hanging out with people or agreeing with people or feeling more in resonance and coherence with people that on the outside you know, this is where the button pushing is going to be. I mean, it's like, and again, this I'm just giving examples. It's not right or wrong. But like somebody, let's say, that's like diehard, you know, carnivore gets with someone that's plant-based and they get along. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? 
because if we, if you have to ask yourself, are you really operating in the oneness? That doesn't mean you don't have disagreements or preferences or choices, but in the oneness, you can understand people's choice and see the polarity that they're, that they're holding on to or, you know, their, their role in this polarity. So the resistance, the pull, the push is actually the opening, the opportunity for possibilities. It's a portal to possibilities, okay? It's a portal. Either you go in the portal of fear in the rabbit hole. I love little rabbits, but again, you know, that Alice in Wonderland was on drugs. You know what I mean? How much, of, how sound of a decision can you make? So, or you either go through that and come out the other side, or do you go through the portal of expansion, the portal of possibilities, the portal of opportunities, the portal of self-expression, creative expression, creative solutions. So there is this pushback, almost like a slingshot being held back. People are saying, I'm gonna outcreate this. I'm gonna create another app. I'm gonna create a way, another social media platform. I'm gonna create this. We're gonna create, we're gonna do this. And as you know, it's stress. I mean, it is very stressful. It's distressing. However, and I know this as a therapist and a counselor, working with stress reduction as a hypnotherapist, we, we call it good stress or bad stress, which is bad stress is distress. In other words, if I'm lifting up on this table and I'm leaning in, it's putting stress on my body. Stress motivates it. Too much stress, what's called mind-body medicine, innervates us, which it means it taxes the nervous system. So we have a lot of distress. So you're gonna to have to find the areas of where is that healthy motivating stress, that inspiration. A couple of weeks ago, I might've mentioned it on this channel, but I hit like a little fear pocket because you know Dr. McCullough was, you know, um, put on some list as well as other people um, of misinformation and dangerous. I mean, it, it just, you only have to look at history if you know astrology to, to see what's going on. And so I was seeing a lot of my visions, a lot of what I received from the spiritual hierarchy and the oversoul coming through, coming through a lot of these messages that over the years I've been sharing with people. And so I got, oh my God, I really kind of caved in for a minute. And then I did some things. I did a little yoga, meditate, listen to music, and I just was kind of in my head. And then I just I just stopped and I just started breathing deeper. And then I got these just amazing downloads and I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna do a reading. So I jumped on and did a YouTube reading. So I was able to get out a couple of extra readings um, <clears throat> or one you know, week earlier in between my client appointments. So that's what we need to do. You need to find what works for you. What's the life enhancing way, the optimizing way, the soul connecting way, the heart attuning way, the aligning to your soul, connecting to your higher self, centering in your higher self, centering. What are those things, those activities? What are those conversations? Me, a lot of times jumping on doing a reading. I mean, there's a lot of different things. So th that's the choice. Is it the portal into fear-based realities. And that's not to do a spiritual and emotional bypass because there are things that are frightening that are fearful. There are, there are things that are happening that are egregious and that are not spiritually based. They're fear-based, even though people perhaps are saying that there's their spiritual or spiritual coach or life coach or doing yoga. They're throwing everything out and saying, okay, if you don't do this, then you can't do this. You can't come to my workshop. You can't do this. You can't do that. Instead of finding the way that how do we do this together? How do we respect and honor other people's choices and wishes? So try to move into the space that this isn't about anti this and this. It's about more pro-choice. It's about your sovereignty, but the sovereignty beyond the identity of how you identify because the more you identify that I'm a this and I'm a that, that's why I'm not doing this or that's why I am doing this, then you are reinforcing the extremes of the polarity. Things as they heat up in the next few weeks to next few months, there's a lot of intense energy, intensification of movement, but maybe feeling held back or restricted by external means. 
you're going to have to find where where's my you know sweet spot on the tennis racket or on the slingshot what can i do what can i do in this situation what can i express what does my soul want to express where is my spirit leading me so the challenges are going to put us in front of us in front of our face the mirror of how do we handle this now we all know that it's difficult on a human level when we get in the human game on the earth plane to make changes unless there's some kind of sometimes stress pressure distress we you know a lot of times we hold on to things and don't make the change well the energy that's playing out cosmically universally it's pulling that away where we have to make dis decisive change. We have to make decisive decisions for the changes that are more aligned with our soul and those that we're meant to connect with. Those soul path travelers on the next step, the next journey, the next leg of the journey or part of the journey that we're meant to connect with, to co-create, collaborate with, to come together with in, in various types of relationships. So yes, it is distressing and kind of and challenging, but painful and kind of scary and frustrating. But it is a call to action. It is the soul call. What are you going to do about this? What are you called to do from your soul? Not from your wounding, not from these external figures are making me do this. Yes, process the fear, the anger. How can how dare they do this? How dare they do that? Because what I will share with you, people are stuck in this, you know, they think it's red state, blue state if you're in the United States, you know, whatever it is. Tory, Labor Party, Republican, Democrat, it no. The greater the agenda all all is in the mix. It's not about a person that is going to free you me free us it's us and as we come together in a collective it's very much about the individual right now the individual rights and the individuals coming together as a collective not the collective determining what's right for the individual but the individuals determining what's right for them and joining and coming together with others to create and live through multiple realities multiple life experiences you're, we're all learning on a different, on a new level, how to shape our own reality, shaping our life by our intention, our awareness, our putting our intention on our, or our attention on our intention, our values, our principles and beliefs. Moving beyond the identity of wounding, of the extremes of the polarity plane, of the dominator culture, of victim abuser, that's not to say that things don't happen to people and you, there's a perpetrator and a victim, but it's a dynamic that has been since beyond written history on this planet. It, it's a game of separation and power over and feeling overpowered, not stepping into one's power or empowerment. So there's gonna be a lot of, lot of situations, especially between now and 2025, and, been, and heightened a little bit 2023 but 2024 to 2025 so we're just we're getting a taste test of what is to come so it is time to prepare all right and it's time to tune in i do love connecting with all of you oh my gosh if you feel a resonance please like comment and subscribe all right, so sorry, number one, number two, and number three. And this is just for the week. There's so much going on. I will be doing September's energy and some other readings. So let's look and see what's coming up. So story number one, unconditional love. And I'm going to try to be mindful because I know some someone was saying that I the way that I hold the cards, it glares. So we've got unconditional love. Wow, that's powerful. Past life activation. Ooh, yes, baby, that's where we're going. Remember, a lot of people are also getting triggered from past lives of suppression, repression. 
and this lifetime of, of being censored. This is a big button. The, the censor within, are we censoring ourselves? The censor within is very much externalized right now. Um, we're living through that, this, the, you know, the censor, um, the criticizer, the, the censor shames, censors through shame and other consequences. Ooh, meditation improves, improvements require persistence. Okay, right off what I get with you, Soul Story number one, there is a lot about um, perseverance, persistence, but opening up to whether it's another lifetime, multiple lifetimes, or this lifetime, other ways that you've lived this lifetime, you have a lot of wisdom and you've been guided. So it's about meditating, connecting more to your higher self before you make decisions. And you may be challenged to have this unconditioned love uh, for yourself and others that you might feel are oppositional. I want to share with you here on this card, perhaps an activation, the eight means you're having to work on yourself. It's a 35 eight, but the way that this comes together, there's one side, but they come, they coalesce in the center. So you might be challenged this week to see someone else's point of view, or you may be stuck in a quandary of different points of view, okay? Wow, look at that universe. These are some very powerful cards right under unconditioned love. Wow, victory, success, which is also, I think this way, I hope you can see it, um, is also belief, faith, trust, self-trust, choose wisely. There it is, seven of cups. Yeah, I'm really getting the, that your higher self is connecting more with you, which is you, your true you, is connecting more to the avatar you or beta you, the icon, right? Um, the emoji you, however you wanna look at it, to move more into a space of your own personal oneness, fighting yourself less. Some of you, there could be some issues or something with mothering or motherhood or mother issues you're working through or could be new parents or something about children. Mothering, I'm getting a lot with mothering, so I don't know if there's just a lot of mothers, and you're wanting to stretch out more. So there could be a lot going on. I'm getting, you know, this is Neptune here, Seven of Cups. There could be a lot of confusion this week of what's right for me, what do I really wanna do, or you have multiple things or multiple projects going on, and there's not quite the clarity. Oh, look at this, movement, choices, decision. What did I say? Choose wisely. We're learning how to choose differently. So soul story number one, you're learning how to choose differently. Like what are the, what do you base your decisions on? That's gonna be big for you um, this week. Got 21, six, so there are three, a lot to do with communication. There could be a lot with interpersonal communication, clearing the air, a lot to do for you this week with relationships. And there we go, obstacles and challenges, five of wands. That's the perseverance, so you've got it twice. Improvements require persistence, so don't give up. Keep on keeping on, you're so close. You're actually manifesting quite a bit. Now you've got this major arcana, the universe card, which tells me that a major cycle has been completed. There's been a quantum leap, but now you're in a lot, and you probably felt it, soul story number one, but now you're in a lot of the details of things, the everyday things. Um, we are also in the time of Virgo, so it can be a time, um, people identify Virgo a lot with, you know, critical or judgment, discernment, but also details. That's a lower to mid octave. The higher octave of Virgo season is planting seeds and harvesting. Um, Virgo is one of the, the triple goddesses, is one of the fertility goddesses. Virgo, you know, along with um, Venus has to do in, in, in um, Libra and Taurus as a sign um, you know, in old times, especially ancient Greece, um, had a lot to do with fertility. That's why you would see Virgo, the Virgin, the Vestal Virgin, also has to do with integrity, 
That's what the virgin means. In other words, I'm pure, I'm whole, had nothing to do with sex. Believe me, they were having lots of sex. Um, it meant that I am not marred by other people. I, I have my own integrity. I'm coming from wholeness in my decisions. And so there will be decisions this month, you know, this starting this week about, is this coming from integrity? Is this your integrity? Is this coming from your truth, from wholeness? Again, what I said in the beginning of the reading, if you listen to that part, um, values, principles, beliefs change, you know, and also our values get updated. There's always these core values that we, that are part of the soul. And then there's these kind of transitory values by where we're at, what we're focused on, what we learn, learning lessons, new awareness, um, but this is a call to connect into what are the soul values? I'll give you an idea, and it's almost gotten me in trouble sometimes, is when people are being pushed around or bullied, I um, always speak up, I say something. And sometimes people say, oh, God, Michelle, why did you say that? It's not your business. Or you said this. Or you're going to get yourself killed, literally. You know, something's going to happen, you know, with gang members. And I'm like, hey, guys, meditate. Let's chill. You know, <laughs> I'm telling you, I've had these stories. You know, one time, years and years and years ago, um, a, a dear friend and roommate of mine, her boyfriend was like starting to fight, fight or beat her up. And I was in the, I came from inside from jogging and I saw this and I, what I, I took a broom. I didn't know what else to do. And I was wrapping it with the broom and pushing the broom in between <laughs> he was like what and he's like i don't know he was pushing her anyway it wasn't cool and she was frightened and i was like and friends like oh you could have got hit i'm like well what am i gonna do i'm not gonna just stand there you know i have to do something so that's intrinsic to me so this is the time to find out what's intrinsic to you and this is going to be your power Focus a lot of the Leo energy on strength this week. You could be dealing with Leo, Scorpio, um, Aquarius energy, also Virgo. But the thing is, I feel for you is you're finding what, what empowers you. You know, I would say right now, your power animal, animal spirit is that lion and is that wisdom. That's why you see the gray hair here. It's the wisdom. You're tapping into some, some of you kind of ancient wisdom, past life. Some of you are going, hey, I did this in my life. I did that. I went to school or I'm studying this or I know more now. And you need to tap into that because you're in whatever changes you're making, you're in for the long haul. Okay. So you have to pace yourself a bit, but this is a time for movement. Things are going to move. There's choices. There's decisions. You're looking at what are the defining factors that help me make the decisions that I need to make. Let's see what the cycle is with Moonology. Let's see what the Moonology has to say for you. Yeah, some of you, this is all about preparing for the changes. Oh, wow, look at this. Yes, yes, yes. A new start is coming, new moon. So that's what you're preparing for. You've actually had a lot of change internal and some of you may externally, you may be in new environments, you're attracting people that are different than you. Maybe you might say foreign or you don't understand, but somehow it's working or you're not sure. New start is coming. You're preparing to make these bigger changes, these more, you have to just find out what is like, what's the basis of my changes? Like some of the, you know, the situation I have with that little doggy, Chuck, which I was going to name Thor. And I realized at this time, I can't do that. So I, I really looked at what are the basis of my changes right now? What are the values? What's my soul call saying? What is the spirit nudging me? And so now I have a criterion or what's the criteria, criteria so you can have a criterion of how you make change. And look, you've got eighth house, endings and beginnings. It's screaming to you, soul story number one, lots of endings moving on from something or someone, but also new beginnings. Aquarius, I know. Told you your wisdom. You know, you got to own it. Know that you know. Honor what you know. There we go. Honor what you know. All right. So story number one, let's do a little astro dice. Ooh, Pluto in the seventh. Ooh. 
Pluto and Jupiter in the seventh house. Okay. Deep transformation in relationships. Close relationships. Some of them could be relationships that could be with authority or external authority figures. Keep your options open, but you're also learning how to think differently. There's this transformation in your thought process, in your thinking, in your mindset. Some of you are helping others do that by working one-on-one -on -one with people, counselings, spiritual life coach, life coach, therapist, psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever, healer, light worker. A lot of you are transforming through one-on-one -on -one contact whether you know it or not. There's a very transformative energy working through you and on you, for you, but that you're also using with others. All right, your Soul Insights mantra is, wow, I don't know why where this is coming from. I am the great transformer. I create from a conscious reality. Whoa, I cannot wait to see what happens <laughs> this week. Just like I couldn't wait the last few weeks, I was like, oh my God, August. I was like feeling the energy and I'm like, okay, wow, August is gonna be really, really intense, weird, st stressful, jarring, jolting. Um, all right, so story number one, let me know how this resonates for you. If you feel a resonance, please like, subscribe, and most importantly, comment. Let me know how you're doing. All right, I'll see you in the next reading. Mm, okay, take my wand here. Whoa, I get the question. What's the question, Soul Story number two? I also am getting Tree of Life. Living light energy, see the beauty in life. So I don't know if some of you study Kabbalah mysticism. There's something about trees for you, grounding, um, rooting, rooted for life, rooting deeper, looking at what roots, oh, personal power. Wow, you might want to look at soul story number one. So there's a lot. See, I feel like this week people are going to be tapping into their power empowerment. Like, what can I do? What can I do constructively? Third ray of creative intelligence. Wow, that's powerful too. So you are definitely this week going to be tapping into the I am presence, which I love the mantra. If you're into mantra meditation, so hum, hum, so I am that, that I am. You, you've got some serious power stuff happening. I mean, some of you could be power plays, but a lot of you, it's leadership. But you have to ground, you have to ground your vision. So be around trees, draw trees, hug a tree. If you can, be more in nature, but specifically be around trees. Also, that third ray of creative intelligence, that third ray has a lot to do with um, not just intellect and, and, and reason, the, lo the higher logos, though, to know. Um, tapping into the infinite intelligence of the all that is. So some of you could be creators, writers, um, getting your own downloads, um, helping others, or you could be working with technology is also what I'm hearing. Okay, let's see here. Wow, what a reading. Tra Oof, what did I say? Transformation. I have a feeling these some of these readings are going to, there's going to be some overlay because I'm getting this soul story number one and number two kind of similar. Foundation, what did I talk about? Roots, trees. So a lot of you are getting rid of things, literally, figuratively, um, cleaning out closets, getting rid of stuff, clearing up. You might find that you feel like you've cleared certain people out of your life or certain focuses, or they're, they're like second circle, two or three circles out, maybe not right in the inner circle. And a lot to do with transformation and letting go. This could be death. Um, as a therapist, it's not, I don't believe ego death. I mean, that's like kind of trite because ego has a, a function, a healthy ego, what we call ego strengthening. But the disowned self, what we call that part of us that we put together as a way to navigate in the world, right? It's the way that 
gets us success or gets us the guy, the girl, gets us what we want, or we, you know, we flash that way with this, or, you know, kind of following the crowd. You've broken down a lot of that financial material changes. So you could be focusing on finance. Okay, it's definitely the message for you is your, your finance is not you. Your bank account is not you. How much or how little is not you. However, this week, I do feel that you are going to be focused on foundation. So for some of you, it is your finances and material changes. For some of you, you're looking to see like, okay, I need to bring in more income, you know, or I want to receive more money or I want financial stability or financial security. So, oh my God, what a message. Look at you got twice the death card transformation. For some of you, the whole way that you live is changing or you're like, wow, I've changed so much. What was important to me before is no longer. So you've got living light energy, see the beauty in life, transformation. I do feel some of you could have lost something, someone, there could be grief, grieving, um, and you're having to kind of move back into appreciation of things or gratitude, gratitude, gratefulness for what you have or the little things. Some of you, I, I do hear like shaman, shamanic inner work, death doula, maybe some of you work with death and dying or birth or, the, or you have a fascination, maybe a lot of Scorpio energy here. Pluto, Scorpio, there's something about like leading people through transition or transformation. Could be even like in sweat lodges or through plant medicine, something. There is something, and I am getting that with this, or some of you are going to have a very powerful experience, or you just did, with the inner realm, but the spirit realm of with animal spirits. Panther, jaguar, jaguar, uh, lion. I mean, the intensity. Eight of Cups, emotional withdrawal, turning your back on something or someone or, or decision to move in a new direction. Wow, harmony. You've got the lovers. So decisions. This could be, for some of you, divorce, separation, um, leaving something or someone or one's homeland, something. There, there's this moving apart, but then there's this harmony. Like you get what you need. That's what spirit wants you to know is you get what you need. Let's take one more card. Yeah, stand your ground. This is about under, living from your heart, from courage, having quotos, having courage. So some of you, um, and there we are, movement, choices, decisions. So some similarities to soul story number one, but I feel like there's this deep change, almost like, oh, something's been pulled out of you. It's like, oh almost like the phoenix rising. Like some of you are saying, oh my God, I went through so much change or so much hardship. But look how you're coming out. This is you. I mean, the intensity there, the, the focus, the determination. Some of you, this is a partner that is going to bring this out in you or the, the two of you are this way together. There's a lot with shared groups also. Let's see here with our astrology oracle cards here. Wow. Yeah, the key for you is your creativity, your creative expression. I don't know if it, okay, this wants to come out. Let's do that. Um, it could be, yeah, second house owning. So some of you could be stressing a bit because you're buying a car, a house, or something, something that you're owning. I don't know, canoe, cottage, or a move is going to be kind of costly, but this is also saying you're you're owning your own gifts, you're owning your own power, your personal power. Here we go again. Um, second house, your values, principles, that you, seeing your resources, and how do you make it in the world to have the financial stability or financial security that you want? Financial stability and financial security. However, you want to look at it or look at it both ways. So a lot to do with money. Um, resources, those that can help you, how you're helping others. Finance will be very key this um, week for you. It could be Taurus energy also. You're owning your personal power. Some of you, this is owning something, you know, 3D. Could be new office 
um, computers, phone, laptop, I don't know. There, there could be some things in the house. Surrender to the divine. That's the letting go. That's the letting go. You got it twice, soul story number two. So you're surrendering to the divine. You're being guided. That is also this light energy, okay? Living light energy, see the beauty in life. But you're going to be feeling more of this interconnectedness. Like uh, even this card, it's very light. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but the surrendering to the divine. This is a light worker oracle deck, I believe. But you receive so much. So I feel like this week is, uh, there could be planning, there could be just some decisions, but it's also about not pushing soul story number two. Draw with this lover's card, harmony, this, it's about drawing things to you, doing what you have to or need to, what you want to, and then surrender it, surrender to the divine. Let's see what the astro dice have to say. Oh, South Note. So there could be break off. So you might hide a little. You've got the South Node in Aquarius in the fifth house. So just be aware not to overdo for those around you, family, you know, office, business, friends. You're learning to connect to your personal power and your own values so that you don't cave in to, to shame, blame, coercion, having to do the right thing because you always do. You know, the right thing for you, soul story number two, may very well be changing or has changed because this is about owning what you need. This is about owning your stuff, your but your power, your empowerment, and trusting that people will be there to support you, that you are being supported by the divine. You are connecting to your higher self, your soul. So through that connection, you're drawing in differently. But you do have to let go of this kind of, um, for some it's overindulgence in something or overfocus in something. But for some of you, it is um, overdoing, overhelping. So you're being asked to connect in more to yourself, to the individuality of who and what you are. Okay, so your soul insights mantra is, soul story number two, is um, okay, for some of you, my personal power comes from surrendering to source. And for others of you, as I surrender to the divine, I align to my personal power. Now, be very clear, connecting to source, God, the all that is, is you, the aspect of, that's the quantum aspect of you. So for some of you, it could be as I connect more to my higher self, I express and experience life through my personal power. Make sure you tap in this week to your personal power, surrendering to the divine, is that faith, that trust, whatever your belief is, and then your creativity. Okay, so there's a lot about creative solutions for you. Um, there's a lot about focusing on what is creative and what 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 moves you. You might have some tough communication with some people and maybe partners like, hey, I need more of this or less of this or this is where I'm at right now. You know, relationships are dynamic. I know for a long period of time when you're with somebody, friends or partners or spouses, um, we may be the same way, you know, we, it's like, oh, I don't need that. Or this is how so-and-so is. And then all of a sudden we change and it's like, oh my God, what happened? You know, and it's like, you know, soul shift. All right. Um, please like, subscribe, comment if you feel a resonance. And I hope you enjoyed your reading and I hope to see you in the next reading. Take good care. Mm, okay, take my wand here. Clearing the slate. Look at the bigger picture. It's okay to color outside the lines. You're moving out of boxes. Some of you are literally moving. 
clear the slate. So there's new starts, new beginnings for many of you. Some of you literally clearing the slate, whether in life, with yourself, with someone else. Let's look at the Oracle. Master healing. There we go. Some of you are master healers. Reiki, energy healing, different forms, Qigong, chiropractic, some of you I'm hearing, acupuncture. Ooh, community. Yes. You know, we all have a design, you know, blueprint and matrix. Um, it's like the spider web, you know, we're in the center of it. So you're clearing the slate to kind of cook something new up and, and new people around you. So many of you could find yourself with new people or different people, or somehow you're feeling like this, wow, this is a way new beginning. I have a lot more possibilities than what I thought. Ooh, shield your energy, look beneath the surface. Well, that's also not getting in outer struggles and strife where you perceive people are trying to put you in a box. Some of you, this is also clearing your energy. Um, yeah, plenty, cleansing, clearing your energy field. But you're also literally leaping from one another. So also some of you, there could be stuff, rub it, rub it, you know, with chanting, you know, mantra, singing, how many, that you're working with your voice. Some of you are working with a voice coach or our voice coach or doing something. Frequency, sound, and voice. Could be sound healing. Let's see, soul story number three. What are your messages? What are the messages? Let's build this up, okay? Let's see what's going on. I mean, that frog is really looking at me in that community. I almost feel like some of you could be doing a full moon, you know, ritual or sound baths or something where... Some of you could also be astrologers, is what I'm hearing. It could be a lot of astrologers are very deep into astrology. Some of you are wondering whether to get on that path, and I do hear that it would be a really good path for you. Oh, look at this. Advanced. Oh, I wanted to say advanced, but it's accelerated motion. Now, look at this. Frogs leap. Leapfrog. You're about to leap to a new level, or you. some of you have leapt to a new level already. You did the leap but there's another one coming, okay? You are defying the odds, soul story number three. So some people probably thought, oh, they can't do this. They're not gonna be able to pull this off. Or it looks like you're taking a long time, but you're now you've set up. See, you're smart. You, a lot of you, and those of you that are now going, oh God, I'm still working on this. It's taking so long. You will have some leaps. And electrical, I mean like major, like woo, inspired, I'm going in a new direction, or wow, this great job came in, or this great relationship. Things are about to activate more for you. Ooh, when you're on your path, to, ooh, this is very powerful. You're on your path to destiny. You're moving into accelerated motion. There's gonna be a lot of communication. Some of you could be on YouTube or doing videos or starting podcasts, something. There's something where you're having to show up more in your life and with other people. You're going to be more known in the community. Look at that crown chakra. Also, the magenta realm is here. So this is also the 10th chakra and above, 10th and 11th, which has to do with community. So you're connecting more with your soul group and your soul purpose, like what you're here to do. That what has a lot to do with communication, whether through art or something. You're designing. There's something that you do. Um, some of you I see didgeridoo also. Wow, and there's a sound of this little plane in the, by the field. Okay, let's see. Ooh, harmony. Look at, ooh, some of you, it's relationship and it's coming through healing. Either they come to heal from you or get some insight or something, or you go to them or something. But a lot of you, you're going to be meeting somebody through some kind of community. Now, it may or may not be this week. It's definitely... Could be September, you know, next few weeks to month or so, you know, depends on what timeline. But this, with the Eight of Wands, it's something pretty soon, pretty quickly. Could be through a workshop, a seminar, whether you're attending or giving. A lot of movement, a lot of accelerated motion, a lot of overcoming, um, misunderstanding, miscommunication within oneself. Um, you're overcoming, misunderstanding the universe or what's going on. You're tapping in your gateway. Oh, there we go. Under destiny. Well, you're a little, some of you are a little fearful to move forward. 
or you're coming out of fear, perhaps you're using videos like this, readings like this, astrology, your own tuning in through your higher consciousness, books, podcasts, something, because you're overcoming the fear and overcoming the fear is moving the wheel. Your, your, your star of, some of you star of David, I'm hearing, um, star of destiny's child, your child of destiny. There is some of you, I keep getting pregnancy with some people. So I don't know if there's a lot of people pregnant or doing with children, but it is your own star, your own inner light, your own inner star that's leading you. So there could be a lot of restriction. Maybe you're in an area where there is going to be more restriction, lockdowns, mandates, this and that, that and this, but you're moving through it. And you're also beginning to recognize that you are on your path to destiny. No matter where you find yourself, you are on track. You are on the right path. I mean, I know a lot of people look around and go, wow, that person's in Costa Rica or Hawaii or Bali or I don't know, the Swiss Alps, you know, in the jungle somewhere, they're on a hammock. Why am I not there? Or some of you are, you're stuck there and you're like, well, I can't get back to, you know, the city. Most people aren't saying that, but I know there might be some out there. Um, you are where you're meant to be. That's what I'm hearing. Memories of love. You've got two sixes here, which boils down to a 12-3. So there is some reevaluating decisions and situations as this wheel turns, the destiny moving you forward. Um, also has a lot to do with people from the past or people that feel like other people from the past or community, different people that you're going to be meeting that feel like, Soul brothers and sisters, kindred spirits is what I'm hearing. Wow, fertility. Didn't I say something about pregnancy? <clears throat> so some of you, if you're wondering about pregnancy or can you become pregnant? Yes, some of you are. This could be pregnancy with ideas. But with the six of, you know, the six of harmony here, which is the lovers, um, that eight, the other six, ten, um, and it is showing there's this very much this coming together. Some of you may be very creative, highly artistic. Maybe you're very visionary, you're artist. Maybe you're writing things, putting things in motion, launching something, teaching. Um, you are, you, you're great with communication. I'm getting that. And you could be getting, again, downloads or understanding things more where you're, you're going to be sharing more what you know and your insights. Conflict and despair, five of swords. So this is just like about not having the negative expectations or don't let the negative expectations stop you or block you. Deal with them in the way that's appropriate. And there we go, new beginnings, yeah. Some of you are already at that new beginning. Some of you are setting things in motion. So I want you to know that you are moving ahead step by step. If things seem a little bit slow, you're going to have a quantum leap. You're going to be leapfrogging. Someone is going to be helping you, a business, a group, a company, an individual. Now, mind you, it could be somebody on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube, or someone's going to say, hey, I want to work with you. I want to do more with you, or I want to pay you for this. Some of you, this can definitely be your art. You know what it is. There's so many different people that it's like, you're gonna know what it what it is, but I want you to know if you feel stuck, things are about to move. Whoa, do we take all of that? Yeah, only three. Have faith in you, there we go. Have faith in your dreams, so you're pulling it in, extra cards. Have faith in your dreams underscoring the message hold your vision and expect powerful change i mean it doesn't get any clearer than this so don't give up hold to your vision your, your this is your vision is coming through coming through from the cosmos god the all that is the infinite innate intelligence of everything and everyone the resonant fields you're tapping into some great stuff so have faith in your dreams. If things seem slow, you will do a leapfrog and then you'll do another leapfrog. This is not just one leapfrog. I see a lot of leaping. I see a lot of movement. And then it may slow down again. And that, that also has to do with the astrology. I mean, I read it as a psychic channel, reading the Akashic energy. 
Um, but it's also the astrology is it's, it's another way of looking at it, that things will speed up and then for some also slow down. But that doesn't mean you're not making, that you're not having movement. And your movement is going to be, you've been doing little steps. There's going to be jumps like, oh my God, all of a sudden I have all this, or I have all this, look at all these cards when I come out. I have all this work, or I got, I got this increase in money, or I got all these opportunities, or my health is, wow, I'm feeling so great. Okay. All right, soul story number three, your little, you like, yeah, you want your confirmation. So Pluto transformation, there we go. That's what we're talking about, these changes. Void of course, moon, something's missing, moon missing. So you might feel like you're a little, and I guess this is why you're getting a lot of comp extra cards. Some of you may feel like you're in a moon void, of course, like nothing's really making sense. It's a little odd. You can't quite get going because you're getting recalibrated. There's a recalibration taking place within you emotionally, mentally, you're all your energy centers, especially mental, emotional. Um, so that you are calibrating differently and that will requalify or change the quality of the energy that you have. And look at this sun spirit, number one, great card, like the magician moving forward, great ideas, genius thinking. You're an expert in your field, getting known for what you do, stepping out further, using your creativity, your great problem solving, creative solutions. You're going to find ways around things. Okay. So trust, trust your gifts, trust yourself, trust your timing. You're not going to get left behind. There's some quantum leaps. There's some leap frogging coming in. We're going to leap, right? That's what frogs do. They kind of go slow and then oh, one goes like that and another one goes further, right? So, and that's very Uranian right now because Uranian, you know, Aquarius is that Uranian, you know, the Uranus and the Saturn or Saturnian energy. So there's this plotting, planning, step-by-step, -step, very sequential, you know, process-oriented movement and very much on structure and security and balance. And then you have Uranus that comes in that's very much about multi-level processing. You know, it's it's not sequential. It, you know, it, it it's, happens all at once. It's processing is all at once. And it, it skips steps, it, but Uranus can be very slow, like nothing's happening. And then all of a sudden, boom, lightning bolt, woo, right? Oh, it's raining, little thunder. Oh, nothing's happening. Hours go by, boom, lightning, lightning strike. So you're, you're having to get used to this new energy pattern. All right, so um, your soul insights mantra is... Mm. For some of you, um, something about mastery I'm hitting. What is that about? Some of you are teaching, and I'm seeing archery, so I don't know if that's something. Okay, so... I am trusting the timing of my life and soul path. About trusting the timing for many of you. And for others, it is possible to move forward at an accelerated pace. Yeah, get out of your head about time and get more into timing. You've put in the time, you've done the steps. And so what will balance that energy out is actually accelerated motion because you have the foundation. Some of you are just doing the foundation, but many of you have the foundation. All right, let's take a peek with the Astro Dice. Wow, two. Second house, oh, Pluto. We got a lot of Pluto energy. Oh, Pluto and Capricorn. Wow, we're in Pluto and Capricorn. Um, I'm going to do a little retrograde in that. Well, Pluto and Capricorn. Wow. So you have to bust through some beliefs. And this is about a bigger game, soul story number three, financially for you. 
opening to more abundance. And, and I want you to env envision what it is and write it out. Like if, if it's if it's abundance, maybe you prosperity, maybe some of you are receiving more money or your income is coming up through clients or customers or raises or bonuses, or you're doing gig economy. You need to see both that you can keep having this money flow in, but you can also have it accrue or grow to be stable. So it's not about focusing only on saving, saving, and not enjoying it or spending or letting it come in. It's both, okay? So there's a lot of transformation that's gonna take place for you in your mindset around money, finance, um, security issues, also around your gifts of what you're actually offering people. So there could be changes in what you charge or how you charge what you deem is, is a worthy exchange energetically, however that is for you, whether it's monetary or energy or service, something. So this could even be some of you that have children. It's like, hey, you got to pull your own weight. You got to do stuff too. So there is this kind of um, deep transformative energy that's coming in where you're going to be looking at like, well, what's important to me now? That's another thing. And some of you, this has to do with relationship where I feel like you're drawing in a very different type of individual or you're preparing to do that. So master healers, master teachers in this group, accelerated motion and movement. Remember, moving can be moving forward, but maybe you're a helicopter and you rise above. All right, Radiant Soul Lights, um, please let me know how this resonates for you and how it unfolds. And if you feel a resonance, please like, subscribe, and share the video with those that you feel it could be helpful. Um, just thank you, grateful for you and being able to share my gifts with you. And I hope to see you in the next reading.